Good evening, everybody. Good to see y'all here. Welcome you those online. And I was working the words on the song, so it's my fault. If I didn't keep up, I don't know how Norman does what he does. And I'm going to call him out on it because he ain't here. <laughs> Norman. Norman. I'm watching you, Norman. You better be watching me. Anyway, I know we're not supposed to call names out, but I did it. <laughs> Good to see y'all. Glad you're here. We're going to continue our study in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 42 this week. Um, so if, if I'm reading the scripture, I encourage you, uh, our online, our internet's back up, so that's the good news. Um, it wasn't our modem, it wasn't our, wasn't our fault, it was something that they had done on the pole out here a few days ago and disconnected us and hooked up something else. It was a dead line, but they got it fixed, so we, we're good. So if you're using your tablet, your phone, or if you actually have a Bible, if you're reading along with me and, and something, I had to type all this in because I didn't have the internet. And I didn't want to go home to do it, so I did it all here. So I might have a word or two. Just understand the Spirit of God is upon His Word. And if I have a typo in here, I'll try not to speak it out. And we'll go from there. But um, we're going we're gonna to go here again in Isaiah 42. So Father, thank you for our study tonight. Thank you for the Word. We praise you that we can lean upon your Word. We stand upon your Word. And Lord, it's just a blessing to study and to come together to hear your voice. And to know, Lord, that you are growing us closer to you day by day. Speak to our hearts tonight. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I start, I wanted to, I wanted to share uh, in our Bible study, our community Bible study, what a blessing we had this week. There was a, this, we've been telling you that God is just really speaking and growing individuals in this study. And just the 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 zeal and the um testimony that this that this young woman has uh in in her circle it's just amazing it's amazing and so we were sharing uh in our study and we were talking about you know uh just basically being you know obedient and walking in the word and uh and it started out we were talking about obedient to government and officials and all that but somewhere along the line she just began to talk about how she had the opportunity to witness to two people in her circle they're friends of hers and they were at a public restaurant and it just it just I mean she, it just flowed out of her and she said I don't know if I said all the right things I said I said the Holy Spirit led you every word and she just poured out the truth of the gospel in that restaurant and what a blessing to hear the growth and to see the growth. Um, God's word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And no matter if you have a heart for God and you're spending time with him and you're in his word and you're praying and you're meditating, he will speak through you. You have no choice. He's going to speak through you and use you, and it's just a blessing to see. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. Thank you. Continue to pray that God would encourage uh, those who come to that study is a very small group, but we want it to grow. We want our church to grow. We, we want to see people everywhere praising God and worshiping him. So it may be selfish on one side of it to say we want to see all the seats filled, but at the same time to see that people are in the seats praising God and hearing his word and studying and meditating and growing, that's what we want to see. And that's what God is doing. So praise God. We are we're so thankful. Well, in our last study... We saw God calling the coastlands or nations to come before him for judgment. If you remember us talking about that. They came silent and afraid, but rather than submitting to him in humility and repentance, they turned to one another. And as they turned to one another, they began to confer about how they can make idols. And so they did. They made all these dead wooden or iron or metal images, whatever, to worship instead of worshiping the true God. And we saw, <coughs> excuse me, idols are futile. That was one of the things that we covered last time. Well, as we flow into this week's study, it's a similar theme about God speaking against idols and speaking against those things. But first, he speaks about the servant or servants of the Lord. And as we get into this, we'll see how, it, how we believe it's really speaking of Jesus as a whole. But at the same time, it can be applied to servants that are obedient to God. 
So beginning with verses 1 through 4 here in Isaiah chapter 42. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastland shall wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness, and I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. So what are your thoughts on these verses? Who's he speaking of? Messiah. He's speaking of the Messiah. And you know, the, 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 the encouraging part for us is he's speaking specifically that the Messiah is coming for the Gentiles. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, he was there for Israel. They rejected him. He will turn his heart back to them. He's never forsaken Israel. We know that. And there will be that time when all the Gentiles have come in, as Romans tells us, that he will turn back to Israel and focus completely on them. But as this particular passage is is written, it's prophecy. It's prophecy about Jesus, the Messiah coming. He, you know, he's God, he's going to be sent, and he's going as a light to the Gentiles. He's going to bring forth justice to the Gentiles. So that's an encouraging word for us. We know, and of course, we, all of us who are believers know this, and those who are listening online, if you're a believer, you'll know this. If you're hearing this for the first time, and you've never really put the two and two together, Jesus was a Jew. <laughs> he came for the Jewish people, specifically knowing that they would reject him, because this was all part of the Father's plan. And in that rejection, the door was open for the Gentiles, which we are. Now, all the people who are not Jews are now accepted into the kingdom of God for those who believe in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the door. There is no other way. And that you might hear some arguments out there. Well, wait a minute. Uh, Jesus really was for the Jewish people, so all these other religions or whatever may be for all the rest of us. No, that's a lie. All the other religions are made up by man. They're worshiping men or man, and they have no truth in them regarding salvation. Only Jesus. And the door was open to all of us because that was the plan of salvation. That's what God had. So, so we read this. We see this is a prophecy about the Messiah. And in Luke 4, 18 through 19, this is what Jesus said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So this is Jesus fulfilling the prophecy that Isaiah had written. He's anointed. He was raised up for the purpose he was raised up. He was sent, and he sent to the peoples. God the Father says, I will hold your hand. And I will lead you through. Now, looking at that, there are a couple of thoughts in these verses. There are, you know, it, we know he is speaking of Jesus. But he could be actually, you could take this uh, scripture and apply it to those who are obedient in following God. You can take those passages, not putting yourself as the Messiah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that you now are, can, are equal to Jesus. No, what I'm saying is, is if you are one that God raises up in this lifetime, He will hold your hand. He will guide your steps. He will lead you to bless those around you and minister to the lost, bring healing to the sick. There are many times we know it's the Holy Spirit. We know it's the gift of the Holy Spirit that says gift of healing. That's one of the gifts, and it's given to us. But God uses men, 
and women in these ministries. And so as God uses someone, it's the Holy Spirit flowing into them, the gifts of the Spirit flowing out of them, all by the anointing of God. So while we're not equal to Jesus, we're not ever going to proclaim that, what we're saying is if you're willing to be obedient to God, He can use you through the power of the Holy Spirit and anoint you to preach the good news. To bring healing to the people. You can bring uh, sight to the blind. Set liberty to those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is, a, this is what we should be proclaiming as believers. Today is the acceptable day or year of the Lord. Today's the day. And so when you read this passage, yes, it is specifically talking about God raising up the Messiah, Jesus Christ, sending him as a man to live on this earth take our sins upon himself, die, and fulfill the passage and fulfill the scripture that Isaiah wrote here. But we know also that as servants of God, God can use us by the power of the Holy Spirit and however he sees fit. And we need to be obedient to that. We need to be willing to be that so that we can say, Lord, here I am. And that's what what Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Lord, who will I send? Well, here I am. Well, you know, that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous thing to say <laughs> if you don't mean it. You know, because God will take you at your word. Here you are. When he goes to send you, wait a minute, I didn't want to go that way. Well, once you come to the place in your life where you say, here I am, send me, then you have to come to the place in your life to say, send me where you will. Not just to Hawaii. <laughs> or the beaches around the world, the beautiful beaches. And, you know, I've never been to Hawaii. It's, it's pretty much pretty all the way around. Those, that, that, uh, that state and all the islands out there are beautiful. You go to some of these other resorts, and you get 50 yards outside of the resort, and you're in poverty. I mean, it is literal poverty. Jamaica's that way. All of those uh, resort places, Mexico, some of the resorts there, you get right outside, and it's poverty. And, and, and it's dangerous in some places. They tell you, don't get too far away unless you have people with you don't go alone uh you're soliciting we went down to jamaica on a uh, mission trip many many years ago we were in the internal part of the of the island and so we were right in the mountainous areas and it was beautiful i mean the internal part but to get there it was probably about a maybe a two-hour drive from from once we flew in and we had to drive through the, the the roads and and they drive on the wrong side of the road over there and they drive crazy over there. I mean, they're always laying on the horns, going around people on curves. They just can't honk the horn and go. And it's just like, and it was so funny. I was with a, a friend, his name, well, I won't tell you his name. But he's, he's passed on now, but he was a gentle, gentle soul. And he was sitting next to me. And uh, as we got driving around and got in there, you know, he, he kind of chuckled. He said, he said, I think that taught you to speak in tongues in your prayer. He said, he said you, were, you were mumbling all kinds of prayers going around those curves. I said, well, I was a little bit scared, to be honest with you. But they were weaving around. We get into this little mountainous place. It was a, it was a um, school for boys. It was a trade school. And it only could hold like 16, maybe 18 young men at a time. And while we were there, we would see women walking their son for miles to get there only to find they had no place and they had to turn around and walk back. And again, with driving and you seeing all the little shacks and all the little things there. But then one day we got to go to the resort and it was fenced in all the way down to the beach line. And the beautiful, the water was gorgeous. We got to go deep sea diving. I went the first time I've ever been, uh, you know, uh, scuba diving. And all the other guys had been trained. I hadn't. But we all had to go through that little 45-minute class. But because I was the only one that wasn't, the, uh, the uh, instructor kind of took me aside when we got out there, and he took me down over 80 feet on my first dive. And we went down around a sunken ship and through coral tunnels, and he kept looking at me and uh, looking at my, my air, and I was fine. I was one of the smallest guys. My air lasted longer than anybody. I was the last one to come up. Beautiful. But as I'm standing there on the beach, you know, looking, there's people on the other side of the fence trying to call you over to sell you something, usually drugs. Um, And then you get out of there and you go into the market and it's just, it's a madhouse. But I tell you that because wherever you're called to go, 
It may not be inside that resort. It may be outside the resort. It may be in the, in the, in the trenches. And if your heart is for Jesus, wherever he calls and sends you, you will go. And you will be ready and prepared to go. You know, right now, there are missionaries in Ukraine. There are Calvary Chapel missionaries in Ukraine. And they're staying. And we're asked to pray for them because they're seeing war. It's happening all around them. But they're there. God called them there. And they're doing what God has called them to do. So as we read these passages and we know that we're speaking of the Messiah, keep in mind that since Jesus ascended and is sitting at the right hand of the Father, what does he do? He sends men and women who are willing to go. And he will hold your hand and he will guide your steps and take you wherever you need to go. Now the second part of these verses that we saw uh, is the sovereignty over creation of all things, including the earth and including man. We can see that God, I am God. There's no other. I am sovereign. I'm the one who created all things. So he created all things. He sustains all things. In Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're listening to this message for the first time and you've never accepted that truth, if you don't accept that truth, you might as, not read, might as well not read on. Because that truth has to be grabbed a hold of that God did create the heavens and the earth. He's created them. He breathed life into man. He created all things. He sustains all things. If you don't have that truth, then why, do you, then why would you ever come to a Savior or a knowledge of a Savior? Because you don't think you need one. There's no God that created it all, so why would I need a Savior from whatever's coming? So... We have to grab that truth. God created the heavens and the earth. And then John 1, 3, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And that's the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And through him all things were created, and we know that Jesus is the word. So we, we can look to Genesis and see the Trinity as well. You know, the spirit hovered over the earth. Then the word is Jesus spoke it. And the Father was present. They were all there. And it's just amazing when you really begin to break Scripture down and look at things and see how we can, we can understand and grasp the, more the fullness of God. We'll never understand it all. But we can come closer and closer in our faith and trust to know who He is and walk with Him and His sovereignty. Because in that sovereignty and power, God appoints His servants. He sustains them. He holds their hands. He uses them to minister to people. So this is something that we can glean from those passages today. God wants to use you. He wants to use you. And will use you if you're willing. If you're not willing, say, Lord, I'm willing to be willing. And let him do the work in you. Any comments, any other thoughts on those verses before I move on? Yeah, he did. He didn't. He didn't cut them no slack, did he? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. I mean, he's the son of God. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's right. And an interesting thought just came to my mind when you, when you said what you said. Many that were healed believed for the healing. But we don't know that they were saved. And there are some that said they went away rejoicing and praising God. But some, they just, like you said, you never heard back. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's the nine women and the two men. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you think about that, sometimes people want to be healed for what purpose? So they can go back to the life they had. I want to be healed from this so I can go back to living and enjoying life again. Well, that's not the purpose of healing in Scripture. The purpose of healing is to reveal the Almighty God and the hand of God touching your life to bring you up from where you are, from the pit of death or whatever it might be, to restore you not to go back the way you were, but to, to make you someone new. And that's the purpose of all of this. And that's why sometimes, you know, uh, I've not experienced this personally, but I've talked to people who, who when they have a healing service or they're involved in, in a prayer time for healing, when someone comes up and asks for, for, a, uh, for a physical healing, they will, before they will do that, say, well, let me ask you this. Do you, are you harboring any unforgiveness? Do you have any unrepented sin that you're holding on to that you know of? Now, there's the, the omitted sin. Sometimes we don't know. We bury things. We don't remember them. So we're not called to go clean everything out of our closet. What we're called to do is to examine our hearts before God. And if there's something there that we know is there, we need to repent before we actually ask for the healing. And by doing so, it cleanses us and we're coming to God with a clean and a pure heart and asking him for a healing. Uh, again, I don't know that that's, that's something that you, you have to put into a practice every time. But there are some people that that's, that's how they pray because it's proven physically and through science. Uh, well, I don't know if science is the right word, <laughs> but through study. Yeah, today science means a lot of things, doesn't it? Um, but through a lot of studies, it's proven that people that, that stress, <coughs> unforgiveness, bitterness attributes to bad health. And so there's a lot to be said for forgiveness. And it's not a choice as a believer. It's a command. And so we're called to do those things. So I think it's interesting as we go through this and, and all the different aspects that pop out at us here. Um, moving on to verses 8 through 12. Oh, yeah, one more. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, he did. God knew beforehand what man was going to do when he created him and put him in the garden. And him and Eve, he knew what was going to happen. He had the plan already in place. And you're right, there's no surprise to God. There's no surprise. Mm hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Use that mic. As for my sake, I mean, I don't, yeah. I can't hear a word from back there. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. You know, another thing, too, if you look at Jesus as a whole, he's the only one that can say to somebody, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. And that's really got the goat of the Pharisees and Sadducees. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, that they, you know, it's easier, what is it, easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or rise and walk? You know, I mean, yeah. Again, Christ is in control of all things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And that's a very good point because that was the one thing that he, he knew what the, what the Pharisees' heart were going to do. So he said, okay, your sins are forgiven. What? And he knew it stirred him up. But he was God. Yeah, and it was the Sabbath. Exactly. Is it right to heal on the Sabbath? Um, in God's hands, it's right to do whatever he chooses to do. And, yeah, he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Exactly. So, um, very interesting there. Okay, verses 8 through 12. I am the Lord. That is my name. Period. <laughs> no, it goes on. And my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. We're now focusing back on, on that idolatry stuff again. Behold, the former, things I have, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell, tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea, and all that is in it, you coastlands and you inhabitants of them, let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar inhabits, let the inhabitants of Selah ring or sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. So what are your thoughts on those verses? Wow. 
I've caught them speechless. Everybody's speechless. Well, let me just interject a little bit here. We worship a living God, not idols. He and he alone deserves our praise. And again, he mentions that word coastlands, as we saw last time. Again, we interpret that as islands or nations. He's saying all nations and all people should turn from idolatry and praise and worship him, no matter where they are. There's no excuse. And there will be no excuse when they stand before God. Well, I didn't know. Well, you should have known. The word's out there. There's no reason for you not to know. The hardness of one's heart causes him to not believe or reject or turn away from and not listen to. See, here's the thing. Many will say, I didn't hear. But I can promise you this. If, if I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's got rerun camera. And he'll back up and say, okay, let me show you. This is when they preach the word, but you weren't listening. So you can't say you didn't hear. You chose not to listen. There's a difference. And so all of that is something we're, that he's talking about here. All nations and all peoples should turn from idolatry. Uh, and all people will worship him one way or the other. Romans 14, 11, which is quoted from Isaiah 45, 23, says, For it is written, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. In Philippians 2, 10 through 11, that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven, and of those on the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this again, this, my mind continues to, to remember and things come, the Lord's bringing me remembrance. Again, in our, in our study uh, this week, the same girl I was telling about earlier, someone spoke to her and said, well, why are we, we're not supposed to praise God. And no, no, let me, okay, I'm backing up. I'm getting the whole story straight. She was following this book and this, this thing called Miracles, something about miracles. I don't remember what the whole full name of it was, but she was reading it. And somewhere, this was before the Lord had really gotten a hold of her. I mean, he was changing her before she even knew she was being changed. But she was going through this book with some other people that had gone through what she's gone through in her life. And she came to this part that said, God does not need your praises. God does not want your praises, need your praises. And, and she said, when I read that, she said, immediately in my gut, I knew that was wrong. I just knew it was wrong. And she said, I, qu- I put it down, never picked it back up again. And so they asked her, why did you quit? And she said, because all through the Bible, it says we're supposed to praise God. Look what he's done for us. I and mean, again, this is all part of the testimony. She's bo- This is bubbling out of her. And this is all part of the conversation she had with these two people at lunch that day. It's just bubbling out. Why should we not praise him? Look at what he's done for us. He sent Jesus, and she just preached the gospel. It was a a blessing. But but this is the point. There are many people today that don't understand the importance of praising God. A course in miracles, exactly. Did you? Yeah. Well, she was reading, and she said when she got, she read that, she put it down. That was it. She said, I would not pick it back up. She said, if there was any other truth in it, I don't know. She didn't say this, but I'm guessing if there was any other truth in it, that one part caused her she didn't want to read it anymore. And that was the Holy Spirit. And this was not recent. This wasn't just in the last couple of weeks. This She put that book down, I'm guessing, months ago or maybe longer. God has been working in her heart and in her mind. And this is what's the wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit is when you're when your heart is willing, he begins to reveal himself to you before you even know that's what he's doing. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes you dig. It caused her to go to the Word. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how the Holy Spirit d- works. He brings us to a place where we can't deny anymore. And he does it differently with different people. And sometimes it's just like you said. They go through, I'm going to prove it wrong. Well, they can't. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of them. Others, you're reading something else. And you're studying something else. Or following somebody else. And all of a sudden, something just doesn't register anymore. Because you're now beginning to see truth. And once the Holy Spirit begins to reveal truth to you, you can recognize a lie easier. And that's what happens with these things. And so, praising God again is not something that should be hard we should be we should find something to praise god for every single day if nothing else if he saved our soul from the living eternal hell we now can praise him for that if we think we're going through hell today (laughs) and many in some ways are i mean physically or or emotionally they're going through a lot of different things so that's that's hard that's real hard But we can lift up Jesus in the midst of it. And we can praise him because he is our comforter. And as we saw in those earlier passages, he will hold our hand. He will carry us if he need be. And he will be with us through all of these things. And this is the God that we serve. So it's important that we really understand what praising God means. And and it goes even back, you know, to the Lord's Prayer is what it's called when Jesus prayed there and, and showed pray this way. What's the first thing he did? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, you know, I don't encourage somebody just to read that every day as a routine and that be your prayer. That's not what that was intended at all. It's an outline. And if you take that prayer as an outline and you take that very first section, you should spend time praising God before you get into the rest of it. You know, oh, I need this and I need that. Well, have you praised me yet? Have you even spent any time with me? Or are you just here for your wish list and you're going to take off? Hallowed be your name. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for placing these stars in the heavens. Thank you, Lord, that I've woken up today and I'm breathing this air. Even if some say I'm going to die because this air is horrible and we're going to be dead in 10 years. I praise you for the air I got. I praise you for what you're doing right now. And I praise you for what you've already done. And I praise you for what you're going to do. Because you're God. And that's who we praise. The living (laughs) God. You know what happened today? Oh my gosh, Lord. And he yeah. wants to have conversations to us. Yeah, prayer is a conversation. Prayer is a conversation. Mm-hmm. And 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 most of the time, unfortunately, we do all the talking. <laughs> and it's just about our this, that, and the other, and then we go on. But prayer being a conversation is also waiting for the Lord to speak to us right. and listening to what he has to say. Yeah, uh, on the lines that, on the on the lines of that is even with Jesus. In John chapter 17, when Jesus prayed, mm-hmm. you know, first of all, you gave honor to the Father. Mm. And then if you go to um, 17.5, even Jesus himself says, hey, you know, glorify me as I was with you in, you know, in glory. I mean, Jesus was actually there. So therefore, you put that note in there that there, there is Christ and God and the Holy Spirit there at the same time in heaven. But then, after you get, then it goes into the, he's praying for his disciples. And then after he prays for his disciples, then he prays for us. Mm-hmm. So even God in that formula of, uh, of Matthew, even in, even in uh, like I said, John 17, he put it in that perspective. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so we can learn so much as we, as we spend that time with him and understand that he is a sovereign, holy God that deserves our praise and deserves our worship and we should be giving that to him again I'm not saying it's easy when you're going through whatever things we go through you know this life throws at throws some bad things at us Satan throws some bad things at us we throw some bad things at ourselves I don't know if y'all remember that little thing I had one when I was a kid called a pitchback you know what a pitchback was it's one of those big net things on the thing and you throw the ball and it comes back to you you don't have you can play ball by yourself I mean, I had to play ball by myself. <laughs> I was the ball. Um, but no, but if you threw it too hard, it'd come back and knock you in the head. But, 
but it was called a pitch back, you know, and you're constantly doing that. And I don't even know where I was going with that. It just, I just thought of it. But, um, but the thing is, is that we need to be able to really be, take that time with the Lord and spend with him and allow him to speak to us and expect him to because he wants to. He wants to. In verses 13 through 22. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. I'm going to take a, just to stop here for a second because something that, that Johnny noticed in the other passages in the early part when we read was, you know, he came gently. He came gently, quietly, and it says he didn't raise in the streets. He wasn't calling and bringing attention to himself in that way that I'm coming to with the sword and all that. But it would appear here in these verses that it's a little bit different of a picture. You know, he's going forth like a mighty man, stir up zeal like a man of war. He will cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have held my peace a long time. I've been still and restrained myself. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. Now this is a descriptive yelling. I mean, coming out and, and just loud. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up their vegetation. I will make the rivers coastlands, and I will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed who trust in carved images, who say to the molded images, You are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf is my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as he who is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but you do not observe. Opening the ears, but he does not hear. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will exalt the law and make it honorable. So God's going to move. He's going to come forth. He's going to move. Judgment is coming to judge those who practice idolatry. Any thoughts? No, no. Well, it was not promised. And, you know, that's, that's the one thing. Even though there were th this country was founded on godly principles and godly men and praying men, it was not promised to them that this country would be what it, what it turned into and then where it's going now. It, it was promised that to those who believe, God would bless. And he did raise this country up for a specific purpose. We were a world leader. And I say were. In the literal sense, we're no longer a leader. We're a follower. We consult with the UN before we can make any decisions. We can't make a decision for ourselves based on the leadership that we have. That's an obvious truth. It's not, I'm not beating anybody up. It's just the way it is. But that's not the way that we were founded. That's not the, 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 the grounding that we have. But again, all of the, the, the uh, spiritual aspect of who we were has pretty much gone now. So any blessings that we have today are on the shoulders of those who went before us. And, you know, the sad thing about that is, is if this country even survives, because who knows the timeline and what all God's doing, but if this country's completely beaten down, 
somewhere down the line, people might say, you know what? This country's in the shape it's in because of our ancestors. The choices that people make today affect things tomorrow. And so as, as believers, we need to be effectually praying for the country and asking God to move, but his will be done. Because he's coming to judge idolatry. And this country and this world is full of idolatry. They worship themselves. They worship the environment. They worship Mother Earth. They come up with all these holidays and things and all this stuff about how this is going on and how we, us puny little people, have the ability to destroy this planet in 10 years. I've heard that since 1970. We've got about 10 years left. Well, now it's been 50 years. Okay, what happened? Well, we got it right for a little while, and that just gave us a little bit more time. No. God will be the judge. God will destroy this country. God will create a new heaven and a new earth. Man's not going to do it. Now, he can mess a lot of it up. Don't get me wrong. We've done damage to, to, the, to the climate and things like that in regard to just the fact that we have polluted so much. We need to clean that up. There's no doubt about that. But not for the sake of Mother Earth. Just for the sake we need to don't be litter bugs. We weren't raised that way. Take out to the barn. Whoop up on us a little bit. Don't litter. You know, hey. Yep. They did. And, and God, I believe, gave them that wisdom to write the Constitution. That's why today the Constitution is in the way of the progressive movement. It's in their way. That's the, that is their stumbling block. They would rather get rid of that than they would Putin. They would. We're the enemy. The Constitution is the enemy. This is where we've progressed. But taking all that into perspective, it's the same way every other nation has progressed because they're not honoring God. And powers have raised up and they've been brought down. And we're just in that place right now being brought down. And whether God raises us again, it's completely going to be up to his sovereignty and his plan. So we need to be praying, Lord, your will be done. And give us wisdom to be obedient to your will when you're doing it. Without the expectations of the comfort zones that we've always had. That's right. And that's part of being a Christian. We shouldn't be in alignment with the world. We should be oppressed by the world. Not that we go out beating on doors saying, hey, oppress me, oppress me. No, citizens arrest, citizens arrest. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to say, hey, I'm speaking truth. If I'm oppressed, praise God, because I'm speaking truth. But don't, don't be all being all upset with yourself when you're being oppressed and you're sitting quiet about Jesus. That's not the oppression that the Bible talks about. And that's something completely different. Well, let's move on. Verses 22 through 25. But this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes. Now, this is speaking back of Israel and Judah again. And they are hidden in prison houses. They are prey. They are for prey, and no one delivers. For plunder, no one says restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will listen and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for plunder and Israel to the robbers? Was it not the Lord? Very important thing that we need to grab a hold of there. It's the Lord that punished them and put them into captivity because of their disobedience. Was it not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, nor were they obedient to his law. Therefore he has poured on, on him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. It has set him on fire all around, yet he did not know. It burned him, and yet he did not take it to heart. Israel, Israel was God's people, is God's people, is, I mean, through Abraham. But they continued to rebel. They were stubborn, obstinate, stiff-necked people. That's what God called them. That's his words. Gave them manna. They didn't like it. Gave them quail. They got tired of it. Gave them water from a rock. They wondered where the next rock was going to come from. 
wanted to go back to Egypt on every turn. And then once all that was over and they finally got into the promised land, they were afraid to take this land and that land. So God punished them because they were disobedient. And how did he punish them in some of those cases? He did not remove those that were supposed to be removed because they were the ones that were supposed to remove them. Go in, take over this city, take over this land, and claim it for yourself. Well, when they wouldn't do that, then they wound up with partial people that were supposed to be completely displaced now against them as thorns, continually poking at them. All through history, in Israel's history, they've had enemies on every turn. And it's because they were disobedient. Now, granted, they would have had those enemies anyway, but they would have had victory over all of them all the time had they been walking with God. But they chose not to. And they chose again. And even now, Israel as a nation is not a godly nation. I mean, there's more stuff going on over there than I even realized regarding uh, sinful practices and things that are happening within their borders. But God is going to deal with that as well. God is going to take hold and, and move back and point back and deal with Israel. But for right now, he's doing what he's doing, and we need to be a part of it. We need to be in obedience to it. We need to be seeing it. And not expecting, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, over and over and over again. Those days, I believe, those prophets that you spoke of, that Trump's going to be back in office in, on this certain date, and this is all going to happen. It's all going to be turned around. It's all going to be exposed. Listen, I don't know about you, but I have heard for the last probably 10 years, oh, all this is going to be exposed, and then they'll get theirs. Really? Who's going to give it to them? Because the people that are overseeing them are in a nest with them up to their necks as well. So there's no punishment. There's no judgment among peers. But when God brings judgment, it will be righteous judgment. They're not escaping. All of these hypocrites and people that have, have, have broken the laws and have gotten away with it, that is not, that it's not gone away. It's just been postponed. God will deal. And so what we need to be praying is that God would turn hearts to him. God, turn your heart, turn, turn those people that are so obstinate against you to you. May they see truth. May they turn their hearts to you. Because if they don't, their destiny is, is signed and sealed and delivered in a rebellion against God. We're, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And while we face all this stuff going around us, we can't let this stuff going around us pull us into the mix and pull us into the worry and pull us into the anger. and pull us. In. Yeah, we have those moments. But then we have to take a step back Step out of it, take a breath, say, you know what, God, you're still on the throne. Hallelujah. You're still moving. Hallelujah. You're still doing a work. Hallelujah. And while we don't see the results yet, when we're all in heaven together, we'll have seen it all happen. I mean, it's just going to be, I mean, a, a glorious day. Any thoughts on these last verses as we get ready to close? Mm-hmm. Not a non-profit organization. They're definitely a non-profit, let me tell you. At this time, so I understand at the time that he was writing this, and we're giving him the, the chance, Judah was not in captivity at the time of Christ. It was still a sovereign nation, and he only lasts for maybe 100 or 200 more years. It, the northern tribe had already gone, the southern tribe had already passed. So he's, so the word's giving to him, if he's writing to him, it's already happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And we could take that and apply it today. It's already done. God's judgment is already done. And, and so we can speak in those same terms. Just as Isaiah wrote it in his day, you're right, it took another you know, few years or however how long it took before the next invasion, before the next captivity. But then eventually they were just dispersed all the way up to 1948. And then they were brought back together as a nation. But what we're seeing here is that, you know, we need, to, we need to be bold in this world that we live in and say, hey, the judgment is already determined. The judgment has been signed by God himself. It's coming. In fact, it's already come. It just hasn't, we haven't seen the full result of it yet. 
And there's nothing wrong in looking at it that way because this is how Scripture's written prophetically that, hey, you may not see it, but it's coming. And even God told, like King Hezekiah, he said, you're not going to see it. And, of course, what was his response? Well, then, all things good. Yeah, I don't have to. It'll be all after me, so I'm fine with that. But the truth is, is that we're in a place now, and this is a serious word, we may see it. We may see it, and we may suffer in the midst of it. But God's still on the throne. Amen. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that too. I think the the passage that talks about, and I believe it's it's talking about the, uh, but when the Antichrist steps in and right before the tribulation, you know, when he that is when when it is removed, when he is removed, all this stuff's going to happen. Well, what is that? A lot of people refer well, that's the church, and a lot of people will say, well, it's the Holy Spirit. Well, then I would say it would be both, because <laughs> the Holy Spirit's in us. So if he removes the Holy Spirit, he's got to take us with him. So whatever's standing in the way, which I believe is the Holy Spirit and the true church, that will be removed, and it's all going to take place. But it's coming. And the one thing we can look at here is God dealt with Israel and Judah. So will he deal with the nations today. And it's coming. History repeats itself. And how soon people forget. They just don't remember. Hey, the last time this kind of thing happened... That wasn't a good thing. <laughs> but that's where we are. So we, we, we as believers are walking and living in a foreign land right now. The United States of America is not my home. I'm grateful in this world that we live in that it is, <laughs> but in, in that sense. But this world is not my home. This country is not my home. My home lies with Jesus. And that's where we all need to be, and that's where our minds need to be. And take out, and, and I can't remember the phrase. Sean mentioned something. Do you remember the phrase he used? I can't remember. He said something about, because it's, it's what I've been, been talking about, you know, regarding the patriotism of the country and putting that above God. Um, um, are, you, uh, are we Christian Americans, or are we American Christians? Yeah, what comes first? And that's an important question to ask. Because it, whatever you put in first is what you're worshiping. So, last thoughts before we close. Going once. Yes, go on. Yeah, um, I think it's very important for our leaders, our military today, especially as American leaders, to instruct their soldiers that you will take care of your family, that you will if you're going out and fighting, it seems like you're going out and fighting for freedom, but you let them know that you can come to you. You know our freedom is like freedom from the world, but no, we still have Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the there are countries that are sending missionaries here now. Yeah. There are there are people that are actually traveling in this country now from different places, ministering as missionaries to the to the United States, because the churches here, uh, not all of them, and I and I'm not beating up the church as a whole, but there are many that have lost sight of Jesus, and it's time we get our eyes back on Jesus and focus on him. So Father, thank you.